friends that popped up on Google. And I thought I'd read you a few of what people who have just graduated are out doing. So here's the first one. When you were in college, you probably felt like it was, ne it was never going to end. You felt untouchable, invincible, that you could do anything you wanted. And then you graduated. Yes, and everything changed. Suddenly, your friends dispersed across the country. Your new best friend is the computer and its endless supply of completely useless job search engines, all of which tell you that your degree is best suited to the United States Air Force. You move back home and realize your parents are exactly the same as you left them. You get a job, and before you're, you, you even receive your diploma in the mail, you realize that it, it is this, this is it, the life after college. And six months after this horrific epiphany, holy crap, um, the grace periods end on your thousands of dollars of student loans. Before you've had a chance to grasp the fact that your entire life of education is over, you're jobless, alone, and in serious, serious debt. Kind of hopeless. So that's one guy. Um, another one's a little more helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, okay, you've been in school the majority of your life. What would your life be like now that you are graduated from college? How will you adapt? The transition from college student to working professional affects almost, at, almost all aspects of your life. Not only will you have to adapt to work, but you also have to adapt to your new life outside of work. After graduating from college, you may find it difficult to progress into the real world. Real world. Here are some helpful tips. Helpful hints. He goes on and he explains, like, make new friends. So it depends on your college friends. Um, say goodbye to copious free time. It doesn't exist. Um, set goals. Change sleeping habits. Purchase work attire. Find a place to crash because rent will be due. Um, learn to manage your finances. Be prepared for an entry-level job. And network wisely. So he actually has some helpful things in there. I can give you the website. Um, but, uh, okay, I think <laughs> my favorite one, because this is so something I would do, uh, is by a girl. So she is, um, okay, she's graduated, and this is what she always thought it would look like. Um, I always had a vision in my head of what college would look like after I graduated. It looks a little something like this. Wake up, full of energy, and head to the gym to keep off those five pounds that keep creeping up on me. Meet the girls at Starbucks for a venti ice green tea, unsweetened with two splendas, of course. Stroll into work wearing the latest dress uh, that I picked up at Bloomingdale's the weekend before. My locks and perfect strands, my makeup just right, make the big bucks, of course, and have all the extra time in the world to tend to my hobbies like scrapbooking, sunbathing, and promoting my online pet boutique. <laughs> okay, she's like, reality check. <laughs> the real world kind of bites. Not only am I in $26,000 of debt and some, uh, some change from student loans, but I actually have to start paying them back. I remember the days when I thought this was a joke and that loans were the government's way of rewarding me for choosing to continue my higher education. Not so much. In fact, I get to pay $200 a month for the next 10 years. So anyway, she goes on and she talks about how she like rolls out of bed 10 minutes before she has to be at work. She's always late. She can't be on time. She doesn't make enough to cover every, all of the expenses of like Starbucks, things like that. So but my, hope, and my point is not to depress you. Like, the real world is out there and it's going to happen and it's not what you think it's going to be like. But I do think that like as I read these blogs, of all these people who have recently done it, I'm like, where is God in that? Like, it's all about money. It's about status. It's about finding your significance and your friends. And I don't know if you guys are anything like me, but as I was getting ready to graduate, like, I was thinking more like, well, how's God going to fit in this? How am I going to find a church? How am I going to still be a part of the Great Commission that, you know, I've wanted to be a part of for so long? And so... Um, first, I want to tell you a little bit about the process I went through um, as a senior in, in college. But I'm on staff. I've been on staff. This is my seventh year. But I don't know if everyone knows this. I think most of you do. Is this is my last year on staff, that I am transitioning off staff. And so I'm right in this with you guys. I think this is why I'm so excited about rethinking about these things. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to be in full-time ministry anymore. I'm starting my own photography studio. <laughs> you know, like, uh, 
how, how does this, how are we going to live um, for eternity in the light of having a job and being in the real world? And so I think the first thing, as I think about, like, kind of this idea of making wise, godly decisions, I think about, um, so how do I know God's will? That's always the first question that goes to my brain. And I think I grew up with this grid of thinking, um, okay, well, okay, I'm going to draw pictures. Artist, hi. Um, I have to draw to make myself known. I always thought God's will was a little bit something like this. Okay, so a little bit like a full size. Okay, I would say I always thought that the middle was God's uh, uh, personal will. I'm sorry, I should think before I write. Okay, his personal will for my life. Okay, like the right job to take, the right person to marry, the right place to live, the right car to buy, all this kind of stuff. It's God's personal will for my life. And then outside of that, I would put his moral will. Like this is, um, you know, this is right, this is wrong. It's a lot of times pretty obvious, just his moral will for the world. And then outside of that, I would have said God's Sovereign will. Like, I believe that he is good over everything, and I'm within this. But the longer I walk with the Lord and study scripture, I actually think this is an incorrect view of God's will. That I actually think it's a little bit more like this. There is no complete center. Okay? But I think it's God's moral will and his sovereign will. Um, And now, saying, I think he calls us to things. I think he can make things known to us, but I don't think that it's like this laid out plan because I have free will. And I have choices to make. Now, I actually think that this gives us a lot more responsibility. The first, living as believers inside of this, I think our biggest priority needs to be the spirit-filled life. You know, surrendering to the spirit, confessing sin, being in relationship with other believers, Uh, reading the word, you know, spiritual breathing, confessing sin, things like that, that I think as we do that, I honestly, the the longer I've thought about this, I am convinced that if I am walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, I cannot go outside of God's will. You know, that I think I have freedom within that. I have freedom to make choices for my life. Um, And so, as I've been thinking about this, even recently, because I'm making decisions, I actually get really frustrated by this. I'm like, just give me the burning bush. Like, I want your will. Like, I want to do what you want me to do. If you want me to go here, I'll go there. You know, I don't have any heart for China, but I constantly am like, Lord, I'll go to China if you want me to. You know, but just give me the burning bush. But... I think he could, but he doesn't a lot of times. But we have, you know, free will within that. So I find myself, the next thing that I'm thinking about as I'm making decisions of, well, so how do I form a grid to make good decisions? You know, I think most of you have probably heard that. Using, you know, your your spiritual senses to make decisions. Like just how we have physical senses, we have spiritual senses of, you know, relationships, the word, Prayer, you know, like you can make a whole list of spiritual senses that we need to be using in making decisions. But I think that that's good, but I'm a little more concrete. I like to know that I'm making good decisions. (laughs) Um, And so, actually, I first came across this my junior year in college. Um, My discipler, wise woman, Anna, I uh, was processing that end of my junior year, into my senior year, I kind of had three options after college. I had a few galleries that were interested in picking up my work, and I thought, you know, it's always been my dream. I could move to New York. I could be, you know, an active artist. I think I could influence people for Christ through my art. Pretty cool that some galleries want to pick up my work. Um, I also wanted, was thinking about, I had applied and gotten into graduate school in Yale for painting, and I thought, that'd be cool. I could eventually become a professor and influence, you know, art students with that. Um, And I also was thinking about possibly joining staff with Crusade. Now, obviously, I'm here. I chose this. Um, But it was a long process. And I I don't think either of any of those three options would have been a bad option. But I think that within that, like with my having free will, you know, within God's I was walking with the Lord, I was confessing sin, that if I had chosen, now God clearly called me to staff, and that's a whole other story.